This week, we're through the canal and get ready to set out on the great big blue. Here we are heading to the bulk food store. Here, uh, turn right here. And Megan, do we have a grocery shopping list? Who needs grocery list? Rice, pasta, flour, wine. That's it. Four things. That's a recipe for trouble. Learn along with us as we stock the boat. Scored some fresh produce, yes! And see a little bit of Panama City. Or maybe more than a little bit. And can someone please tell me how to store polyurethane? Pacific Crossing provisioning about to start. Pacific Crossing, well, that's hard. That's a tongue twister. Pacific, Pacific Crossing provisioning about to start. Pro <laughs> Pacific, <laughs> our Pacific Crossing provisioning is about to begin. Yeah, try Nate and I are heading out and Sorry. we're leaving the kids unsupervised. To do school. Do right school. On. And chores. And screen time. And screen time. And you hopefully, see how much chores we no. when we come back, the boat will still be floating. It'll be floating. Diving in the Pacific, here you come. Ready to go. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <sighs> Trying to negotiate a good price on a package. This stuff will get expensive. So we're on our way to the Costco equivalent, bulk food. Exactly what price we need. Price Mart. Price Mart here in Panama City, volume. Because we are heading out on at least 30 days at sea, and then we'll be in French Polynesia where there's not good provisioning. At least this side of Tahiti. We should Sorry. leave well stocked, clearly. Until New Zealand. Turn right, and, uh, turn right here. And Megan, do we have a grocery shopping list? Who needs grocery list? Wait, did we just leave the list in the boat like you forgot it? No, I don't have a list of what we need. We just need to buy more than we think we're going to need, more than we think we're going to need, and we'll be fine. That's right, folks. We're grocery shopping for 10 months, give or take, and we're just going to wing it. That's right. You, you think, oh, how does this happen? Like, how would you possibly go about it? You just wing it. You just go down and you bid big bags of rice and flour Here's in the car. Here's the problem. And that's if I put together a detailed shopping list, 50% of what I put on there, they won't have. Oh, blame won't the store. Be, I won't be able to get it. So I'm gonna go in here, mm -hmm. at least on our first run through, and see what they have. Then we'll take it home, back to the boat, and do a diagnostic of how much room you, do we you still tell have. tell me we're gonna have a list tomorrow. Uh -huh, we'll have no, a list tomorrow. No, no, no. It's really hard. It is really hard, so we just don't try. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. That's our motto. It's hard, so we don't even try. Here we are. We're not going to the exit. Okay, yeah. That's still hard for me. Megan is a shopper, and I'm not a shopper. Megan's way of shopping, she doesn't have a list. And so she'll just go down every aisle. Down, 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 down. 
see if maybe there's something in that aisle that she wants to buy. Drives me nuts. I'd be in and out of here in 15 minutes. I have three things, but I'd have lots of them. So look, we don't have to buy the printer, the photo paper for the printer, but... If but you wouldn't have got it if you hadn't gone down that aisle. So you just, but, you never know. No, well that's true, but also it means you're done. Of course, because we haven't gone down it yet. We're also in the, we're looking for a vacuum. Rice, pasta, flour, wine. Vacuum. That's it. Four things. Would get me all the way to New Zealand, those four things. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, there are accoutrements. Yeast for the flour, Parmesan cheese for the pasta. Something for the rice. So you're even looking at things that you already own. Is that what's <laughs> happening right now? Yeah. Uh -huh. We have that. She just tortures me on purpose. Not on purpose. <laughs> Two cases of avocado oil. So how much did round one cost this? $700. $700. Half of that is avocado oil and <laughs> the case, you heard that right, case of maple syrup that we bought. Right, we like maple syrup. We won't tolerate any of this fake stuff. We just got a flat tire driving down the highway. So here we've pulled off to what looks like actually a pretty scenic area and we're gonna have to figure out what to do about the flat tire in our rental car. We're gonna fix it. That's what we do, we're cruisers, we fix things. We're gonna fix the flat tire? I'm, I'm gonna change it, I'm gonna put a spare on. Do rental cars even come with spares? <laughs> Pretty cool. They've got Maui gyms there in there from 1985. Uh-huh. They had uh, every flag imaginable. I don't know how many Benin or Bulgaria flags they sell, but they've got them. And they had drawer upon drawer upon drawer of charts. And we asked for a specific one and they printed it out for us on fresh paper and you can smell the fresh ink. Pretty cool. We are gonna Definitely put cool. marks of us going across the Pacific on that guy. Round two. How much does this cost? Day two, round two. Uh, we're gonna do round three later today. Uh, this one was 800 bucks. Wine is the expensive one here. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're worried about getting recognized. <laughs> we often wear the same clothes several days in a row. Uh, at least one of us does. Um, more than at least one of us. Well, that's true. Kyron often wears the same clothes for several weeks in a row. That's true. He has uh, a real problem with that. So Megan and I were, <clears throat> Megan was concerned that I was wearing the same shirt and that we'd start to be getting recognized here in Pricemore. Round three. Here we go. Intestines. That's for sure a tongue. Should we leave with some beef tongue, intestines, and some liver? Or just lots of wine? And cheese. What do you think? I, look, this stuff is great. I'm not, I don't turn my nose up at it. I'm not, I don't prepare it real well. <laughs> our bananas, got our yogurt, pineapples, wine, meat. We get attacked by vampires at sea. That's right. We'll be all right. I tell you what, I've never been so turned around as I am in this city. It is not easy to get around. I'm not sure if we've said that before. 
We have no idea where we're going. Once again, here we are in the car. We were hoping to only have the car for two and a half days. And we should have just bought the car at the <laughs> Yeah, we extended it and extended it. Scout, Scout, this is Seeker. This is Scout. Hey Scout, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, we're passing you on the causeway right now. Can you see us? Sure can. Okay. So we're gonna park and then I'll give you a holler when we're ready for you to come and get us. Okay, sounds good. Alright. Love you. with our 60 unrefrigerated eggs and as is inevitable some of them are broken so I'm going through the eggs right now and picking out the broken ones and then I'm going to transfer them into clean carton uh, where they will live for the next month or more uh, and I will say that the eggs that um, smashed did also soil their neighbor eggs a little bit and so I will wash those and then put them in the fridge and we will eat those in the next day or two um, if you wash the eggs they will lose their ability to stay uh, at room temperature and they will spoil much quicker so do not wash your eggs fun times don't count your chickens before they're hatched Oh, I'm using that. That's cool. <laughs> so original. <laughs> We're gonna go to the dinghy dock and we're gonna rent some electric scooters. Stepping on the hall like a pro. Oh. <laughs> it's never, it's never. I'm going 15, yeah. Okay, I, this can go 20. Oh, really? Wow. I'm going 20 right now. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's not so no easy way. getting to the dinghy. No way. Oh, I want to watch too. Can she do it? Oops, sorry. Can. Oh. Yep, she can do it. Here, whoa, here comes Dad. Back on Scout, there are a few small projects to tackle before setting off. Some are easy, 
like a fixing starling so it's secure in its homemade holder and can swivel on its own. Or one last fuel run to replace what we use transiting the canal. Hey Nate, what are you doing? Uh, just playing my love for my wife. I'm a, Under the kitchen sink? Uh, the galley sink, I should say. I'm a uh, function guy, not a form guy. Well, that is for sure true. And the old sink was working, in my opinion? It was working, but it was literally crumbling and leaking. So we got a new faucet. It's not the sink, it's a faucet. Uh, the faucet was crumbling and leaking. So we got a new faucet and I think it's going to be so much better. The, uh, the old one didn't have a spray nozzle. So this is going to be just so great for getting off gunk on plates, but even more so just keeping the sink clean. I am so super excited. The uh, attachments didn't fit. So a ray for scout and her never ending spares. I was able to get from our stores the right adapters to make this faucet go. Can you turn on the sink for a second? All right, it's fine. If you asked me to summarize boat projects in 45 seconds, this would be it. I need to replace one of our fuel caps, which had become stripped. I can't hand force it back down into the pipe to the tank, so I tried WD-40 to give it some lubrication. Nope. I resort to a rubber mallet, which I don't love doing as the pipe is just plastic, but it works. The holes didn't quite line up, so I have to drill new ones for the screws. No problem. The real fun begins when I bring out the polyurethane to make it watertight. It seems no matter how I seal the tube back up after the initial use, tape, nail, new tip, it goes hard. It works like magic, but it's super frustrating when it's single use. As my patience runs thin, I end up breaking the tube in the middle, assuring it will only be a two-use item. Open for tips here. We just got back from the fruit and veggie market here in Panama City. We went to the San Felipe um, Nero, I'm not sure. Um, the one that's in Old Town and it was great. That was the most produce I have seen in a long time and everything looked really, really fresh. We scored big today. I got a ton of citrus, as you can see. And what I'm gonna do to preserve it for our journey across the Pacific is wash it really thoroughly and then um, some of it I'll probably just freeze whole, but I'm gonna slice it or wedge it and put it in a Ziploc bag, a freezer bag, and um, freeze a lot of it and it will preserve it almost indefinitely. And what you can do then is use the entire fruit instead of just the juice inside. I have a ton of things to do. Uh, we are hoping to head out tomorrow 
and we wanted to wait to get our fresh produce until the very last minute but that means that my day is really going to be packed with it's going to be really really busy with just preparing all of the fresh stuff um, so that it will last as long as possible I have never done anything like this before this crazy long journey um, we're really truly going to be self-sufficient for 30 days at sea away from land no buddy boats um, just Scout and her crew bobbing around on the ocean I would love to know at least another boat that's going out there around the same time but we're adventurers and we're going to be as safe as possible we're going to you know do as much as we can to stay safe on the boat and um, it should be a beautiful life-changing amazing adventure that is a lot of citrus we should be good for a long time no scurvy on this boat uh, fresh herbs I am going to not wash until I'm ready to use so I'm going to wrap them in um, paper towel and when the paper towel starts getting damp after a few days, I will replace that. Again, just hang the paper towel out on the line to dry and then you can reuse it the next time that you need to swab it out. But I also have, um, I'm not sure if I showed you this, I also have some herbs hanging out to dry here, some um, thyme and rosemary. Nate's done some adventuring, some uh, bigger adventuring in the past where he's had to be self-sufficient. When Right after he graduated from college, he did a three month long trek from Oregon to Virginia um, cycling, not trek, he, did a, he, he biked unassisted, just two lanyard packs on the back of his bike with one buddy, just camped on the side of the road. You know, so he's done stuff like that, just with like the very bare minimal essentials. And he's also obviously gone to Patagonia with Chiron, but he also did it when he was in his 20s um, to do a long trekking adventure. And, you know, we've done, we've always been relatively close to shore. Um, so this is just going to feel so much different. I, I don't know, a little nervous, very excited. Um, I can't wait to get there. Um, so here we are, right on the edge. We're getting so close and I'm nervous. This is a uh, tip or trick that I have been hearing a lot about online recently. I'm going to give it a try. I have never tried it myself before, but supposedly aluminum foil is the trick for celery. Wrap it up airtight or as tight as you can on the ends and it can last for up to three months. On to carrots. Unpeeled, unwashed, wrapped in a paper towel put into a Ziploc bag with its brothers and sisters. Cucumbers, same way as the carrots. <laughs> I usually just keep my onions in a little basket on the shelf in my frit and my galley. They last amazingly long. <laughs> Look at this! It's our special day. Yes. Someone very romantic got us roses on our last night in Panama City. Next time I will get into the documents folder will be in French Polynesia. So in a way it's like the documents are already there. Now we just have to follow them. Does that make sense? 
not positive I follow that logic. <laughs> What do you think? Thank you so much for watching. We hope you'll join us next week as we set sail on our biggest adventure yet. Turn right, then turn left. <laughs> turn right, then turn left. I mean, we just literally went down a road where there was three dead ends. We just, you couldn't. And it just keeps telling you, make a U-turn, make a U-turn, make a U-turn. Make a U-turn.